Welcome to the second episode of the electric boat motor build that I'm doing. Um, I've sent the actual motor housing off that I showed you in episode one to be welded. And while I'm waiting for that to come back, uh, I'm going to unbox the second motor that has arrived and also quickly run you through the uh, the motor adapter rings that I've done uh, that will allow me to fit the actual motors to the motor housing itself. So yeah, let's take a look at that. So this was the first motor that I ordered. So this is the 10 kilowatt brushless water-cooled golden motor. And I used this first one to make all the CAD drawings for the actual motor adapter adapters that I've made. And I have now also received the second motor. So I thought we can do a little bit of an unboxing of that one to give you an idea of what you get when you order it from Golden Motors. So let's see what we have here. So they all always pack it very neatly um, and show it's gone through all the quality assurance tests. You get a little uh, wire connection manual which you can put to one side. And we have the motor itself. So they've sent some hoses for the water cooling. So put that to one side. And then we have the motor itself. And also at the same time ordered a, a spare buck converter, which I will be using to go from 48 volts to 10 volts. So it's a DC to DC converter going from 48 to 12, allowing me to run the pumps, the water pumps that I need to uh, for the cooling. So we'll put that aside. And here's the motor itself. It pretty much looks. Some other connectors, which you can leave in here. And also the little uh, key steel. So that's quite important. You don't want to lose that. So, if everything is right, this should be a, an exact copy of the motor that I already have. So let's see. Let's put that away. And we now have two motors. There we go. That looks pretty much the same, which is good. So a little bit about the the motor rings. Uh, I draw them in, in CAD. So I literally just took the, the measurements of all these holes and the radius. And then I did a test cut because I didn't want to do it in 10 millimeter stainless steel straight away because uh, I haven't done a lot of CAD drawings myself and then find out that I had messed something up. So I did a, a thin test cut just to make sure that these slider holes were lining up so that I, I can then move this up and forward. So this is actually a replica of the uh, motor housing itself. And also that gave me the opportunity just to make sure that I had I had measured these these holes correctly so that they would line up as well. So once I had confirmed that, I then ordered the same parts laser cut, but in 10 millimeter stainless steel. And once they came back, I then had these holes, uh, I think it's M6, uh, threaded. And also I countersunk all of these 
so that when the ring is on, it can slide against the back of the uh, motor housing uh, without uh, having any bolts sticking out and being in the way. So what we can do while we're waiting for that weld to come back is that we can actually put these rings on. I think that before I put them on finally, I will do so with, with a bit of Sika Flex because this is stainless steel going into aluminium, which is never a good thing in the long run because they, they get stuck when they start to, uh, to corrode. Um, so there we go. And there we go. At least it will give me a chance to make sure that everything lines up properly. So that goes there, that goes there. Another reason for using these rings is that the torque of the engine, every time the engine, the motor, not the engine, the motor is, is starting, is going to torque like this. So I think that if, if you didn't have this ring, there would be a lot of pressure straight on these holes, which after a while, because it's aluminium, would probably start to to uh, wear a bit. So at least now the pressure is going from a stainless um, onto these stainless points here, rather than to the actual motor itself. You, you will under or you will see it will make make more sense when when I put these these rings onto the actual uh, motor itself. If anyone needs these um, motor rings or adapters for anything else, it might be for a you know you might be doing a motorcycle or I don't know, then just reach out to me and I'll send you the CAD drawings and you can then you can then make these yourself. Uh, save you having to draw them in CAD yourself. So this gives you an idea of how they sit. And then the idea is that this will then sit on the motor at the back and it will sit with those two, those two bolts and the whole thing can then move up and down so I can ten tension the uh, the pulley belt. So, but more about that when I get the motor back from, uh, from welding. So I think I'm gonna stop here and wait for the weld to come back so we can start to assemble uh, the whole thing. Um, so yeah. Thank you for watching this second episode. Next time, hopefully we'll have the motor housing back so I can put these uh, motors onto the actual housing and we can start to see a little bit more of the, uh, the build and the design. Uh, any questions, pop them in the comments. Uh, if you want to have the drawings for these CAD things, give me a shout and I'll post them to you. And um, yeah, if you uh, want to keep on watching, don't forget to subscribe. And if you didn't see the first episode, then I leave a card here somewhere and you should be able to, to watch that. Thank you.